Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and today we'll be working with the Jack Richardson Hand Glazed Porcelain 11 Well Round Mixing Tray with Clear Plastic Cover. So what this is, is essentially it's a mixing palette or a mixing bowl, mixing dish I guess, for watercolor. I got this for Christmas from my wonderful mother, so I thought I'd do a little review. I have opened it and I've looked at it before now, but I have not used it. Alright, so you have the cardboard box like covering. It's kind of difficult to get out. There we go. I've got my camera tripod in a weird area. It makes it hard to get a handle on things. And then we've got obviously this box which opens in the flap. And I believe my mom got this off of Amazon. So then we have this here, the tray in um, bubble wrap, that's what it's called. It's taped shut. Oop. No longer taped shut. Well, obviously this, this video isn't sponsored. Maybe this is something I got as a gift. Um, this is the cover. It obviously doesn't click on or anything, but I suppose if you wanted to keep stuff out of your paint, you know, dust and stuff, it would would do that. It's not going to keep them wet, but it would protect this at any rate a little bit. Alright, I like this a lot. I'd been wanting one of these for a long time. Um, a ceramic mixing plate at any rate, because I use this kind of plate as a palette normally, which is um, just a plate I got at the thrift store for like 70 some cents. And I had been looking for a deviled egg tray, which is actually pretty simul similar similar <laughs> to this um, to use for a mixing tray, but I hadn't been able to find one. And I guess my mom knew I wanted one of these and she got me this for Christmas. Um, it's very smooth. You can feel the glazing and it didn't say it was hand glazed, I believe. There's just a few spots there where the, it isn't glazed. It has an M on it. I don't know if that means anything. Maybe it's a medium size. Maybe that's their like mark. Alright, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to paint ourselves a little picture and going to use this. Okay, so the paint we're going to be using is this Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolors. Um, we're not really going to do so much of a painting as some color testing. Um, you know, not testing, what do you call it? I'd call it a glazing sheet, I guess. So we've got these, which were actually also a gift. But not from my mother. And we've got this. It comes with a thing that shows like what colors you can paint with each of these colors. But what I want to do is, like I said, a glazing sheet. So I think what we're going to do... I want to do a rainbow. So what we're going to do, I guess, to start with is organize these. And then we have these three, which aren't part of the rainbow, we'll put over here. Alrighty, how many colors do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. Not perfect, perfect, but you know what I mean. Alright, let's get started. I'm going to put just the tiniest of drops in there. And to remember which ones I've done, I'm going to... Sorry for bumping that. That was the uh, tripod I just bumped. We're going to put some water in here. This is the Eliezer uh, uh, and Crimson Hue. I probably said that wrong, butchered it, but oh well. Please let me know down below how to pronounce it if you do know. All right, that's not much paint, but we're not going to be doing much, so it doesn't matter. Let's move those up for now out of the way. Put that over there. And we're going to do this. Okay, so while I get the second color, ooh, my brush is not cleaned out all the way. Anyways, while I get the second um, color started. I'll tell you a little bit about why glazing tables, glazing charts, whatever you want to call them, are important. 
Glazing charts um, are essentially, I've got a clump of paint on my brush, there we go, are essentially something to tell you how the paint looks with another color layered over top of it. I apologize for the weird noises. My brothers are playing video games downstairs. Most likely a Wii game such as Mario Kart or something along those lines. Perhaps Guitar Band. That's what they're playing right there. So I'm going to label these while I talk. How's that sound? Um, we have... AC Red. Alright. Glazing charts are important because if you want to layer colors of paint over top of each other, we have issues, painters have issues with knowing is it going to be muddy, is it going to work, how, you know, how is it going to affect the colors. So that's essentially what this chart does. I'll let you know ahead of time what it'll look like. We're going to just go in a kind of a... Um, that's really dry on there. That's not good. Um, what would you call it? Um, a rainbow spectrum. So I will meet you on the other side. Okay, now that, oops, now that um, I have all the colors down, I'm going to label this one real quick. I have to let them dry so that I can paint over them without them smearing because that's the idea. You want the colors to lay on top and not get muddied. Okay, now that we have finished letting this dry, and I mean completely dry, we're going to paint on the rest of the lines. A little more water in there. Dry it now. Let's see how well this works with re-wetting. I like that. 
apologize for that, my tablet's making noises. So now the idea is you can see you just paint across. And you get to see what the colors look like underneath. So now I know what red looks like on top of every other color. And you can see it got a little bit muddied here. The color kind of got picked up off. Drop a little bit on there maybe. Alright, like I said before, I apologize for the screaming. My brothers are down there playing Mario Kart. I think it gets very, very competitive. Alright, so now let's do the orange. Since I already labeled them once, I'll label them when we get to the end of it. I'm not going to worry about it right away. You don't want to drag it too much. You just want to get over it as quick as possible if at all possible to do it quickly like the line messed my line up so I was trying to go quickly all right now this looks like something kind of important to notice these colors are kind of lifting which is just how the paint is I can't really do anything about that unfortunately because it is completely dry it's not like I fudged it and said oh it's close enough no it is dry speaking of fudge while I was waiting I went downstairs and had a piece so now So now we just need to let this dry and as you can see the shadows are getting quite funky in here because the sun is starting to go down. It's only like 3.30 maybe but it's, mm, excuse me, hiccup, it's, it's late enough so I'll let this dry and then we can talk about this a little bit. But while we're letting that dry, I'm going to talk about this. Um, this palette I don't think was overly expensive because I had my mom, she wanted me to send her um, a list of things and this was one of the things on it. but. I think it was maybe like $15 or something like that. It wasn't overly expensive. But I really liked how this worked. I like how the colors collect at the bottom. Like you can see here where it splashed up on the sides. Sorry, I rubbed my brush up on the sides. But it's down at the bottom. Like here, here, and there. I really, really like this. And I haven't used this middle one yet. But I would expect the same from this. Um, I will let you know. It doesn't seem to be staining. Like if I take a brush like this. To get it properly wet like all that seems to be coming off it doesn't seem to leave much of a residue behind once you get the paint out if I can there you go <laughs> hopefully you can see that and um, yeah so I really like this, this palette I definitely would recommend it if you're looking for something but if you can't afford to buy a palette right now I would definitely recommend maybe getting a really cheap plastic one the color won't necessarily pool, it might bead, which is kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. Or if you want something ceramic but can't afford one of these, look in your local thrift store, see if you can find a, a plate like this, which isn't the best, but I've been using it for almost a year now and it works just fine. Or, like I mentioned at the very beginning, a deviled egg tray, because they have holes like this in it. And it might not be white, it might be yellow or something, which might mess with your colors a little bit. Not that it would change the colors of the, the paints themselves, but it might 
in your head they might seem different, but it would be a good start. And you might be able to find a white one or a mostly white one. Or you could spray paint it probably and then seal it with something. Um, yeah, so that's what I've got to say. Um, I will show you this. It's pretty much dry now. I didn't use that much paint. Alright, so I'm hoping you can see this alright despite the funky shadows. You can see like here, this is what it looks like to put the red over top of the blue. This is what it looks like to put the blue over top of the red. So I know what it looks like if, for example, I want to use this color as a shadow. I know what each color combination looks like. Like, there's the orange plus green that makes a brown, you know, so does that. And this kind of also gives me the benefit of knowing which colors lift. Like, you can see it starts, really starts lifting here and here. You can see all the green and this blue. So I know maybe this, these colors aren't the best. And I notice it a lot in the blues as well, but that's more of a quality of the paint. And these are, I do believe, student grade paints. They aren't perfect, so you want to be really careful when you're adding more paint. Maybe dab it on rather than dragging if at all possible. Wait, make sure it's completely, com com completely, completely dry. Um, but yeah, I really like, really like this and I'd recommend making a glazing chart if you are planning on doing any painting with new paints. And yeah, that is it. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.